Hi Stampers, it's Lisa with Queen Bee Creations and we're here for today's um, YouTube Live. Let me switch you this way. Um, we're going to be making an adorable card today and we're kind of changing up the stamp set a little bit. Um, we're using Nuts About Squirrels and you noticed in my card I made mice. And so I'm going to show you how we're going to make mice out of the Nuts About Squirrels stamp set. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm moving you down to my desk so I can show you this cute stamp set. And I love this one because you can choose to stamp it, the outline, and then color it in. Or you can use the coordinating stamps and use those to color it in, which kind of speeds things up. And remember, I mentioned that you really, 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 really want the um, Stamparatus. The reason behind that is they're putting it on the retirement list. Yes, we do know what's happening on the retirement list. And this is one of my absolute favorite tools of all time. And they're retiring it. They had some legal issues with it. I don't know. It's complicated. Um, way above my pay grade. But it's still going to be available through the end of the month or while supplies last. So if you are interested in one of those, I highly suggest you go get one because they are fabulous. And I can show you all kinds of ways to use it. Um, they're also retiring the Nuts About Squirrels um, stamp set, which can be used with that. But we're going to make the mice, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a So Saffron card base, which is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then we've got the one on the inside, which is four inches by five and a quarter, which is the same as what this one is. And we're going to be making the cheese um, by cutting holes in the, this layer. And then we're going to make the mice and have them pop out. To make the circles, where did I slice them? Here we go. We're going to be using the layering circles dies. Again, remember I'm always telling you I am a huge fan of basic shapes. And these can be used regardless of what stamp set, DSP, cardstock, whatever you're using. They work with anything. And they're both retiring. The rectangles and the layering circles. I am so bummed. But nobody asked me. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this. Um, I'm going to use these two smaller sizes out of here. And we're going to use the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine to make the circles. Now, I know Stampin' Up! has a die that we can use to do this that will be one run through the machine and it cuts all of them. But I just didn't spend the extra $30 to get that one because I knew I could use my individual circles and get the same effect and I can move them around where I want them. So um, that's what I chose to do. And what I did when I originally did this guy, I actually stamped him first, cut him out, and then I kind of laid him down trying to figure out where his head would poke out. And then that's where I stuck this one. And of course, cheese is always sliced through holes. And so that one's going to go on the corner. So I'm going to start with that. And then I just move them around. I want this one over here. Let's go about there which means this one can go here and just kind of randomly placed them around. Remember when you use your cut and emboss machine, you want to take turns flipping the plate. That's going to make it wear evenly as well as moving the dies around um, all over the plate, not just in the middle. This one's going to go down here at the bottom. 
this one here. How's everybody doing today? We got snow again. I am so ready for snow to be all over, I tell ya. It's not bad, but it's still snowing. I'm over it. Sunshine. That's what I want. 65 and sunshine. That sounds perfect to me. All right. So, I mean, I probably could do a few more, you know, one here. Let's do one here. I don't want them in quite so far, so let's turn it. And we'll make this the last of our circles. Because we want to get on to the rest of the card, right? For those of you who are entering the hashtag prize patrol, thank you. What that does is it gets you entered into the drawing. Because at the end of our show today, I'm going to spin the wheel. I've got a computer collecting everybody's name over there. And we're going to spin and see who I am mailing today's card to. So if you want in on that drawing, type in hashtag prize patrol, all one word spelled correctly, all that good stuff. I can move you back down. Okay, so when I did the squirrels, I took the outline image. And I stamped it onto smoky slate cardstock in basic gray ink. Have you guys heard we're doing a color refresh? It was announced yesterday that they are retiring a certain number of colors and then bringing in certain colors. I think it was 11. And of course, you know, there's also the the in colors, which good news, Fresh Freesia is not really going to retire. They have decided to move that from the in color lineup to our standard core group of colors. So that was kind of exciting to find out. So if you like Fresh Freesia, good news, it's staying. Okay, um, scissors and pen. Um, they are also um, retiring a bunch of other colors. I printed it out. I made this graphic to put onto our um, Facebook page. And they are Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, Blushing Bride, Pacific Point, uh, Soft Suede, Crumb Cake, Mary Merlot, Let's see, Rich Razzleberry, Mint Macaron, and Pear Pizzazz. So all of these colors are on their way out. And what that means is that anything in the catalog that contains these colors, those are all going to be... Um, retired. So anything in those colors, we're talking some designer series paper, which usually retires anyway, um, ribbons, embellishments, uh, markers, blends, cardstock, ink pads, refills, all that stuff. It's all retiring. And then they're bringing in these new colors. So remember when I said Fresh Free Show is staying? We're also getting a baby pink. I think that's what I'm most excited about. 
Um, they are giving us new colors, Azure Afternoon, a Bubble Bath, and Pecan Pie are all, oh, and Lemon Lolly. They're all brand new colors we've never seen before, but they're also bringing back some retired in colors. A Berry Burst, Lemon Lime Twist, Lost Lagoon, Misty Moonlight, Blueberry Bushel, and Pretty Peacock. And then of course we get our new 2023 to 2025 in colors. Now you can't get too excited about them yet because unless you want to sign up and be creative royalty and join our team, you can't get these colors quite yet. You have to wait until May 2nd. Like I said, you can get them now if you sign up on my team, but I wanted to show them to you so that you knew what equivalents we were going to have for the retiring colors. You know, if you're really bummed we're missing Pacific Point and you really like that, our replacements are kind of, you know, there's this teal and then there's these darker, more um, prominent blues. The Misty Moonlight is a denim and Blueberry Bushel is more of a true blue. So, like I said, if you want these colors, run out there and go, get, go grab them. And then in May, we'll have our new ones. And they shifted everything around in the... Um, colors like something that used to be down in um, subtles may have moved up to brights or you know neutrals into regals I don't know they, they shuffled so there is a video on my web page as well that talks about that or my Facebook page sorry so when I did the squirrel I came in with my marker and I just kind of drew parallel to that other piece. And then I came in with my scissors and I cut off that extra line. So I'm probably not going to be quite as finicky as I was when I cut it out for our sample because I know y'all are watching and you don't want to sit here and watch me cut the whole time. But I do want to point out, as I always do, that I tend to turn the paper and not my scissors when I fussy cut. And I try to stay close to that line without cutting into it. Now we're coming down here to where he has this nut and we don't want him holding a nut. We want him holding cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that part off. And then I wanted his little hand to pop out. So I'm going to come in here with my snips again and cut along this hand. This is why you want to be sure you have a pair of snips because they have this really teeny tiny tip on them and that allows you to get in close. It would be better if I had my bifocals, but you know how that goes. Um, but the tip allows you to get in close so that you can really hone in on where you want to be cutting. So I've freed his hand, basically. And then I'm going to take one of our um, little pieces here. And I'm just cutting a piece of it. And then, because we're putting So Saffron onto So Saffron, I wanted the cheese to pop a little bit, and so I took it, let's make it a little bigger, that one looks small to me, okay. and used one of my sponge daubers. And 
just added a little edge to it. And this is just going to make it pop. We don't need to add much. We just want it kind of creating a drop shadow effect. But it's going to make it stand out when we put him into the hole. So then I just kind of arranged it to where I thought it was going to cover up the nut and hold his hand there. Now I've noticed that I don't need a lot of this nut. I can cut that off so that it's not going to come out from behind. There we go. I really like that. Okay. Again, I probably could trim a little closer with my snips, get in between the tail and his body and the ears and all that, but you get the idea. Yeah, isn't it a fun idea to turn them into mice? They have the little pointy nose, made me think about it. Um, and I, of course, I've probably seen it on Pinterest somewhere. I spend so much time cruising Pinterest that I, I get ideas, but I don't remember who did it first, which is probably kind of sad, but it's cute, right? <laughs> Okay, and then I stuck him into the hole, and I wanted him kind of half in and half out, and so we can maneuver him around until, you know, I'm comfortable with where he's sitting and, you know, whether or not his arm is going to be showing there, because I've kind of got a little hole there. Um, and then after I get him positioned to, you know, like where I want him in the little hole, then I can come over to the back side and put a little tape down. Oh my goodness, five to eight inches of snow in Wisconsin. See, that explains why I don't live in Wisconsin. My grandparents were in northern Wisconsin, and I remember calling my grandmother one Christmas and asking her how things were, and she said the weather outside, it was 40 degrees below zero. I didn't even know you could go that far below zero. That just seems silly. Okay, so there's one guy. Then I'm going to come in with our second little mouse and trim him up. See, Kathy's excited fresh freesia staying. That's good. I always love a little, you know, freshening up. They do it to keep track of, you know, trends and um, just to keep us fresh so we don't get bored in what we're doing. And it's funny how if you cruise Pinterest, you know, not just for cards, but for clothes or home decorations or any of those things, the colors that Stampin' Up! picked match a lot of those, which is funny because Stampin' Up! starts their process on all this at least two years in advance. But I guess the clothing and furniture world would have to do the same, so I don't know. But it's really fun to look at how we are keeping up with the trends and staying current, which I usually don't. I'm very old school. I like things boring and predictable, I guess. Um, and classic, I like to call it. But I guess if we want younger people to get into the world of stamping, we need to do something they would like too. Okay, so there is our little mouse for the corner. And again, I wanted his feet kind of in and his hands out so he's coming from inside the cheese. Then I flip it over and I'm taping his foot down. And I'm using Terran tape. 
because once I have it anchored down, then I can peel off the backing. And this is going to be our adhesive for sticking the card down. Or we could choose to do dimensionals. Let's do that. And I guess we could have used dimensionals to hover over between his foot and the background too to anchor him in. But just the idea is you want him anchored so that he doesn't shift around. Let's move that out of the way before I stick the card into it. I'm sure I'm the only one that does that, right? Get a card all finished and flip it over and stick it right into the ink pad. So we're going to be able to peel off the backing. And we could, if we wanted to, give this a little bit of a pop too. It's not necessary, but you could, you know, drag along the edges of this and just give it a little dimension. Take off all the backs. If you have placed an order with me this week between now and, or actually Monday and the 15th of April, I am going to spiral bound your catalog for you before I mail it off. Of course, everyone who places an order with me of at least $50 in the last year, I guess, um, automatically gets a new catalog. If you want to work with me and you're not on my list, um, please contact me. I'd be more than happy to send you a catalog. Um, but by placing that order of $50 or more, I'm going to spiral bound it, which helps it to sit on the desk nice and flat. And it also gets this protective cover so that it keeps it nice, but it allows you to set it down and it's flat. And I will do this for free before I mail it out. Priority mail. Ensuring that you get it before the catalog goes live. Okay, so now we need our sentiment. So I always have my little Pendaflex folder here. Um, 99849. That's on my little list of recommended products on my website. But I, it allows me to keep all these little pieces that I cut off of other projects and be able to use them for new projects. And if I keep all my colors together, I'm more likely to use them. So each color I have paper for, I have the little Pendaflex and a manila folder inside a hanging folder for each color. So say I pull out basic black, it has its own, you know, hanging folder. Then it has the Pendaflex. Then it has just some loose pieces. And then I have my full pack of backup. So they all fit in a two drawer file cabinet right here at my desk, making it super easy to dip into. 
when I'm creating. Ah, oh, as I say, I had basic gray. And then our stamp set, there we go, has all these little sentiments in it. So I'm gonna pull out happy birthday. I line them up on the grid paper making sure it's straight and then aligning my block with the grid paper as well. I'm stamping off to the sides of the ink pad to make sure that I'm evenly distributing and using all of the ink. Since most of the time we have a tendency to stamp right in the middle, we will run out of ink in the middle, but still have lots around the edges. There is our happy birthday. And then I'm going to kind of eyeball it and say, okay, I want to cut off about there. Now you'll watch this goes across a flat section and then there's this section that's been raised with my dimensionals. And so I'm going to mimic that. And then I'm going to stick a dimensional in that corner to hold up that part of the flag. And then I'm going to put regular adhesive in the middle. That's going to ensure that it stays flat and even with the whole rest of the card. Okay, this one I ran out to the absolute edge. This one I stopped at the four inch edge. Looks good either way. Then on the inside of the card, I went ahead and I took that four inch by five and a quarter and a the little mouse, the, the one crouching and put him on a block and down here in the corner i'm going to have him just sneaking in from the side always best to look straight down from the top okay then i'm going to ink up his little tail and i want the tail kind of winding around up here and i only want the outside one. I don't want this inside one. So I can either selectively stamp it or I can come in here with some cleaner, maybe a baby wipe or the Simply Chamois or something that will just take the ink off of that other line so that I can come in and stamp that tail and it's just the skinny side. Then I can come in with my marker and give it the other side of the tail. And again, I'm turning the paper instead of my arm because I want to keep my hand in a neutral position that feels good to draw, but still get my good arc in there. Then I'm going to use another sentiment. Hope you're feeling bright eyed and bushy tailed. And we're going to go ahead and stamp that right in the middle. You'll notice I kind of give it a little bit of a flick there at the end. That's because I want it to snap off high up here so that when I go to touch again, it actually has adhesive there. I also want to make sure that this edge right here is super clean so that it does not um, catch. 
I'm just checking for any questions. Let me know if I can answer anything for you. There's the inside of our card. So what do you think? You're seeing more versatility to this stamp set now. It's one of the things I really like about our stamp sets in that they come in sets like this. You don't have to use every stamp in here. Um, you could use the sentiments all by themselves. You could use the branch and then the leaves. You could put a little a few acorns at the bottom um, and never even use the squirrels. I mean, that's just an option. I, you know, and you could make these leaves either fall colors or spring colors. You could go either way. Um, so there's today's card. I wanted to point out because a couple people lately have said that they missed me being live. Uh, I wanted to show you that you can subscribe to my channel, which helps. So this is my channel out there on YouTube. Let's see, let's make it bigger. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is my channel. You wanna make sure that you are subscribed. But if you look here on my home page, it shows my upcoming, um, obviously we're in this one now, but my next upcoming live will be on Monday and you can click this little notify me button and that's going to tell you when I go live. So it'll send you a little message. So just for those who were wondering, that's where you would find that and you can see we're doing a really fun card on Monday. Uh, we are using another item from the online exclusives, the Irresistible Blooms. And quite a few people have used this one. It's been out there for a little while. It's got some fabulous dyes to it that have these little bubble effects that are currently not available, but they should be in the week of April 17th. Um, so these will cut out flowers um, that are the stamps, but it also cuts the flowers out of the designer series paper, um, which is always really fun. And like I said, these cut out bubbles. They're super cool. Let's see, I have that over here somewhere. I had that card. Ha! There it is. Okay. The, oh, I'm not even showing you. Uh, let me show you my desktop again. <laughs> Here we go. So this is the card I'm doing Monday. This one right here. It is a tower fold card. So it does fold up and go into our standard card base, our standard envelope. Um, you could add a piece of white to the back here, maybe even a little decorative on the sides. So you would have somewhere to put your uh, message and make it look like the inside of the card. But it stands up for display, which I think is super cool. And this is done with the dies, cutting images out of the designer series paper. And then I just sponged the, them a little bit, cut out the leaves. I started showing you the the bubbles here and the detailed leaves and the solid leaves. Here's our bubble edge. This is a bubble circle. It'll cut out in the middle. Really cute. Uh, the designer series paper is six by six. So it has, you know, of course, kind of muted, not muted, but What's that? Non-distracting? <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Um, but just kind of a basic background that's not going to take from your images. If you wanted to have a really striking image, you could use this muted part on the back. I 
Um, this is where I was saying it's cutting out those flowers. I used those on my card. And you'll notice this has some of those new in colors we were talking about. This is Pretty Peacock. We've got some Lost Lagoon. Um, some fun new colors. So that's what we're working with on Monday. So have I given everyone enough time that they've gone in there and put in hashtag prize patrol so that we are ready to spin the wheel and see who today's winner is and where I'm mailing that card off to. Okay, I want to remove the desktop and we're ready to spin. So Connie said she hasn't seen, she's seen that fold, but never done it. So hopefully I can break it down for you on Monday and I give you an easy way to do that fold because it's really fun and very striking. I think people would be very impressed to get that on the other end. Um, seven entries. We had a really good chance for you guys today to win the drawing. So there we go. Sonia is today's winner. Congratulations, Sonia. Um, you want to head over to my website, queenbeecreations.net, and then up there in the address bar, you want to put after the .net slash and then prize patrol that's going to take you to a google form where you can fill out um, your address to where that gets mailed and i will pop that in the mail to you this week so several of them to send out so i apologize some of them are running a little late um, there's been a lot to do with the new catalog and paper shares and um, new colors and all that good stuff so i promise i will get them out of the mail this week but come back and stamp with me again on Monday at 2.30 Mountain Time. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.